Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to talk about the brand new eventing framework or more like messaging framework the more you start reading into this post over here that is coming in .NET 9. Now in early January Microsoft made this post and they announced that they have intentions to create a built-in .NET eventing framework which the way it is described or perceived in many of its features could be something that has the potential to replace libraries like Mediator, Mass Transit, and Service Bus Wolverine or Brighter. And as we're going to see in this post, the authors of those libraries are very, very worried because Microsoft tends to kill projects that they eventually bring native functionality in the BCL, in .NET. So in this video, we're going to see what that eventing framework is, how it is going to work. We're going to see some code and we're going to address the concerns that people have. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out my courses on domtrain.com. So as you can see, Safia posted on the 8th of January that they have plans in .NET 9 to release an eventing framework. And I want to make something very clear. Microsoft and the .NET features we'll be getting, we have a big theme. And that theme, as you can see here, is make .NET 9 the best platform for cloud native development. You can see that with .NET Aspire, you can see it with the vending framework, the caching, uh, you can see it with the trimming that we're getting, uh, rate limiting, and so on. Microsoft is very cloud native heavy now in .NET, because, spoiler alert, they run a cloud provider, so they want to make money. Now, the first comment immediately is, well, I'd like to chime in here, and that's, by the way, after 18 days, so this went unnoticed for quite a long time. But basically, we have like four big message handler frameworks. We have the source generated mediator. We have Jimmy's mediator that only does uh, in-memory messaging. And then you have mass transit Wolverine and also and service bus which is a paid product that can do both in-memory messaging and some of them can also plug different transports so you can have things like hey i have a queue here from amazon or a queue here from azure service bus take a message do something in the application so the question becomes okay why are you doing this if we have libraries that already do this and wouldn't it be better to just help those libraries and invest in those libraries rather than building a microsoft way now, I want to make my take very clear. As I go through this, you'll understand that I like this idea. I like that Microsoft is bringing a common abstraction on how to do this. And I think this won't really kill any of those libraries, but I do think they're going to have to adapt. In the same way that Serilog adapted when the Microsoft Extensions logging provider that does structured logging came natively in .NET. I think those libraries will end up becoming a provider for the way Microsoft will do the built-in abstraction. But let's just move along and read a few of the comments. Um, you have people chiming in like Jimmy, which is like Mediator is not comparable to this feature set, nor would it plug into a common event bus interface. I can totally see someone building a whatever dot extensions package to plug into this. And just because I want you to quickly understand what they have in mind, I'm gonna jump to a few messages down below where we have some diagrams and some potential code, still pseudo code. Now, before I move on, I wanna let you know that we just launched a brand new course called From Zero to Hero Kubernetes for Developers. And it is a must course for any developer thinking of working with cloud or already working with cloud and wanting to understand what Kubernetes is and how to use it to a production level. It is delivered again by excellent author Dan Clark who did the Docker course. And now both courses are bundled. So if you wanna learn everything about containers, there's a bundle for that. And also the first 200 of you can use discount code CUBE20 to get 20% off your purchase on the Kubernetes course. So link below, click that and get it before it's gone. These do go quickly and this is a very, very popular course. So if you wanna master Kubernetes, that's the best way to do it. Okay, back to the video. So here's what David Fowler says about this and we have some code here. So apologies for the confusion and the concern because there was a lot of wow, what's happening? Are you trying to kill all these libraries? Well, the idea is to focus on a small subset of event handling, effectively web jobs v2. So Microsoft has this Azure Web Jobs SDK over here, which is <laughs> it's okay. And they're trying to unify the programming model for those to something closer to what minimal APIs now have. And then you'd be able to say, as you can see over here in the code, go ahead, add Azure Service Queue uh, and the name of the queue is orders. Add the events, that would be the new way of doing things. Add the queue provider. So we would have messaging providers basically. And then you would have with provider, get that from the app over here that is built through the builder and then 
orders, which is a provider, dot map event, and then you would map order received, which is the name of the message, presumably, then you would have the DTO and then you would have dependency injection in the logger. So sort of minimal messaging in a way, which I really like. And you know, you can have all these handlers with all these other libraries, but those are too reminiscent of controllers for me. So it kind of feels weird to have minimal APIs and then these handlers when you can have a unified model and then maybe just push wherever you want. You don't have to have the processing be the same for everything. Uh, but this proposal, I quite like. And they say that they're building on top of cloud events, which is a CNCF project, as you can see over here. You can read more about this um, later. It's not too important, but basically they're trying to build on top of a unified standard. And they're really concerned about the web jobs aspect of it. Um, and the fact that we're getting it as an abstraction as well with potentially in memory processing uh, would be a nice, happy accident. And they're planning to have the same concepts that we have in Microsoft extensions. So middleware, filters, and as they say, minimal APIs for events. There's actually a diagram I want to find over here. Here you go. So on the right, you have what's happening currently with the server, with minimal APIs. So you have the I server that can be, you know, Kestrel or whatever. Then you have the HTTP context containing everything about that HTTP request and response. Then you have a middleware pipeline, so sort of a chain of responsibility thing. You have the HTTP routing happening and then filters, model binding, and then the endpoint execution. So it's sort of the same thing from an eventing or it's really more like messaging anyway, provider standpoint. So event context containing everything or the cloud event, uh, then middleware pipeline, message routing, filters, model binding, the same chain of responsibility, which I really like. We kind of already have the exact same thing with every single library that exists. You know, Mediator has this behavior, Mass Transit, uh, Wolverine and Service Bus, Brighter, all of them can do basically the same thing. But I think the fact that we'll be getting it as a built-in thing has the potential to get better adoption, but it also has the potential to harm the adoption of those other libraries. And knowing that all of them are monetizing in some way, it is harming sustainable open source, I think, or it has the potential to harm sustainable open source. So as Safia is adding here, Ivan Provider is an interface that can be implemented to support resolving events from a variety of sources. So it wouldn't really matter where their events come from. They can be time-based events, they can be queues, they can be, I don't know, Kafka, they can be anything. And it's just an addition on top of HTTP. So it's a non-HTTP alternative. Now, I want to talk about the drama a bit, all the concerns really that authors have, open source authors, because you have uh, the authors of other developers of Mass Transit, uh, Mediator, you have Wolverine and you have a service bus uh, and Brighter as well. So, for example, Jeremy Miller, uh, he is the developer of Wolverine and he's building a business around it. So what does that mean for him? So if we go to the very top over here, as you can see, uh, the criticism that some people have over things like Wolverine, which if I go over here, we'll be able to read, is that why not support existing open source tools like Wolverine or Mediator or something else instead of building something from scratch in-house? Well, the comment here is one-man library and the tools are designed to promote their creators. The design and functionality depend on the owner. When someone is dissatisfied, they create another very similar tool to fulfill their needs. This last bit is certainly true. I don't think these libraries or these tools were designed originally to promote their creators. Like, I don't think that Jimmy would like to be known for Automapper, but I do think that the design and functionality heavily depends on the mindset of the creator. And that is fine, by the way, because even Microsoft design will depend on whatever they like. Now, their standpoint is please everyone, but primarily us, Microsoft, because they want to use it for their own stuff. But also it is true that people tend to just gravitate towards something that Microsoft is doing. So the moment Microsoft builds something, it will be adopted. For example, minimal APIs have really wider adoption, really, really wide adoption, actually, compared to what we had previously, which was... Nancy FX, or even the evolution of Nancy FX, which I forget the name of it right now. But basically, ASP.NET Core, the way we know it now, and minimal APIs did kill a couple of projects already. So it is a valid point to say this might happen. Now, Jeremy is like, well, it's not a one man library. We have a company behind it, and we offer similar commercial support offerings like uh, Service Bus or Mass Transit and Rebus. So there is a fair point to be made. There are companies behind those tools. However, do you want to have to pay commercial support for a potential bug in the system? 
Well, if not, Microsoft will support it anyway as part of their LTS or STS. So I can see why the people would want this to be a built-in feature in .NET. And then Ian Cooper, who's a developer behind Brighter, great library, by the way, uh, stay tuned for a video on that at some point. He makes a good point that when Microsoft enters the space, that diversity and competition that we currently have with choice uh, will be crushed and lead to less innovation and less choice. It is true, if Microsoft brings this out, I will try to use it or build on top of it. So I can see myself actually building providers uh, for the built-in eventing mechanism. And actually, if there's a developer trying to make a name for themselves out there in the open source ecosystem, I think a great opportunity would be that when this is out, or at least when we have an RC that we can use, get on it and start building transports or ways to talk to different things like different queues, different mechanisms, because I can totally see people using this a lot. Now, then we have David Fowler defending it. I do want to say that the argument that we have an open source tool, so Microsoft should not do something built in the framework is a take I don't really like, because there's a reason when Microsoft built something, people adopt it. There is a sort of not quality necessarily, because open source can be very high quality as well. And these libraries that I talked about are, but the support and knowing that if something breaks will be fixed for free by basically the best in the industry is a very nice thing to know for companies big or small. Now this GitHub issue is way too long to go through everything so I'm going to put a link in the description in case you want to scan it. I highly recommend you go, you read it if you're interested in and you do give your take, you do reply, you do comment because once it's in the BCL, Microsoft can really change it. So if you stand in the don't make it or do make it or make it in a middle ground situation, uh, please do leave a comment in the issue because Microsoft will need that feedback to make that decision. But I want to know what you think. What do you think about all this? And do you think Microsoft will kill those libraries? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.